Hi guys and welcome to this video, my name is Jaime Valencia, I'm part of the PDI Technical Advisors in Cisco and today I'm going to show you how to configure the SIP integration between CUCM and Unity Connection on 11.x release. I hope this is useful for you. The first thing that we need to do in CUCM is to configure a SIP trunk security profile. We go to System, Security, SIP trunk security profile. We click on Add New. This is going to be a non-secure integration, so we're going to leave the device security mode as it is. And we also need to choose these three options. Then we're going to click on Save. The next step is going to create a SIP profile. This option is under Device, Device Settings, SIP Profile. You can choose one of the ones that you have by default, like for example the standard SIP profile. I'm going to use one that I always use, which is the standard SIP profile, but I enable the options pink. I'm going to copy this one, and I'm going to use it for Unity Connection as well. And we're going to save it. In next place, we need to configure a SIP trunk. The option is under Device, Trunk. And we're going to click on Add New. We're going to choose the trunk type to be a SIP trunk. These options we're going to leave to SIP and non default. We need to fill in all the basic details. If you have more than one server, you want to make sure that you check this option run on all active unified CM nodes. I only have one, but it is still a best practice to make sure that you have it set. We're going to define the column search space for inbound calls. And we need to make sure that we check this option. From this part for the outbound calls, you need to make sure that you use this option as well. And depending how you want to handle the calling and connected party information, you want to set it to just deliver the directory number to just send the URI or to send a combination of both. On my scenario, I'm going to be handling everything primarily by the directory number, so I'm going to leave this to the default setting. Then I'm going to be using the FQDN for my Unity connection. We need to make sure that we choose the SIP trunk security profile that we created, the SIP profile as well, and also, we need to make sure that we choose the right call search space for the rerouting and the out of dialog. Once you have all those options, you can go ahead and save this. With the SIP trunk created, we need to go ahead and configure a route group, a route list, and a route pattern. Just as with the SIP trunk, you want to make sure that you enable the Run on All Active Unified CM Nodes option. And we're going to save it. As you can see, it should show us registered to your CUCM server. Once we have this, we are going to go ahead and create the route pattern. I'm going to use the same numbering plan that I used for the skinny video integration. And I'm going to use 4000 as the voicemail pilot. I'm going to choose the route list that I just created for this. The rest of the settings you can leave to the defaults. Now we need to create the voicemail pilot. This is under advanced features, voicemail, voicemail pilot. We are going to go ahead and use Unity Connection Test, which is the name for the default profile that I use for the skin integration. But as you can see, I have removed all the information. This scenario is going to be the same voicemail pilot number, it's going to be 4000. I'm also going to use the same cost space as I used on the other video because that one will work for this one as well. I'm going to save this option. Then we need to create the voicemail profile. I'm also going to be using the default one, which was created on the skinny video. Already I have all the information that I would need for it. I already have the correct voicemail profile name and I already have the voicemail pilot that I just created. 
If you want to go ahead and configure SIP Digest authentication for your Unity Connection server, you need to do so under the SIP Trunk Security Profile. Let me show you that. You will need to check this option, Enable Digest Authentication. If you do not wish to use Digest Authentication, this could be it for the configuration on the CUCM site, and we're going to go ahead and start with Unity Connection. In the Unity Connection site, we need to go to Telephone Integrations, Phone System. If you remember, I already changed the display name for this one, which was originally Phone System. You can see that I enabled it to be the trap phone system and also to send message counts. We are not going to change any of the other configuration. I'm just going to click on save. And as you can see, we still have the warning that says that the phone system cannot take calls until a port group is set. Use the related links for that. So we go to related links and we click on go. This time we are going to change the port group type to zip. We are not going to be using authentication. In the contact line name, we need to type the directory number that is going to be the pilot in our CUCM. In this case, it's going to be 4000. I'm going to leave the SIP security profile to port 5060 and the SIP transport protocol to TCP. Then we need to type in the host name for our primary server. And we're going to click on save. Just as with SCCP, if you have more than one CUCM server, you can change that and adjust the configuration under Edit Servers. Then you need to add all those servers in here to make sure that you have failover. I'm going back to the basics. And as you can see, we also have the warning that this one system cannot take calls if it has no ports and to use the related links. If you go to related links and see add ports, you need to click on go. If you watch my previous video, you will remember that this server can only have 24 ports and that is what I'm going to type here, 24 ports. They are going to be all enabled, they are all going to be in the phone system CUCM test, the port group is going to be CUCM test-1 and they are going to be assigned to this server, I do not have failover in Unity connection. They are going to be enabled to answer calls, to perform message notification, to send NWI request, and also they are going to allow trap connections. Now I'm going to click on save. Now as you can see, we were successfully able to create 24 ports for this integration. They are all going to be listed down here. In the information panel, we see this option. We recommend that you use the related links to run a check telephone integration, and that is what we are going to do. Right now, as you can see, there were no problems detected, and we can go ahead and close this. If you also want to add your CUCM server as an AXL server, you need to do so under Phone System. We go to CUCM Test, we click on Edit, and Cisco Unified Communications Manager AXL Servers. As you remember, as this is not a fresh install, I already had this configured from the skin integration, and right now I do not need to do anything else here. As this is going to be a non-secure integration, this could be all the configuration that I could require in my Unity Connection server. Now before the demo, just in case that your SIP trunk does not come up and shows us in full service as you can see in my screen, what you can do is that you can choose your SIP trunk to Unity Connection and that you can reset it. That usually does the trick, just in case that you try to dial and you cannot reach voicemail. Now I'm going to show you how this works, I'm going to be using the same users that I had for the previous test with the skin. They are going to be Corey Taylor, who is registered in my machine, and I'm going to have Bill Mosley in a virtual machine. For this demo, as you can see, I already have my directory number for Bill Mosley, call forward all to voicemail, and I'm going to dial from Corey Taylor. Sorry. Bill Mosley. Is not available. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Hello Bill, this is a message that I'm leaving you and I'm using the SIP integration to Unity Connection. Let me know if you get this. As you can see, right now we get the MWI in the IP communicator and we also get the message notification in Jabber. For this test, I'm going to hear the voicemail in Jabber. As you could see, once I started hearing the voicemail, 
the MW ID disappeared from the IP communicator and also from Jabber. I'm going to leave another test message and this time I'm going to hear it using the web inbox. Now, as you can see, in the bottom of my screen, I have the web inbox and I have a new message. I have the MWI on, on the IP communicator, and I also have it in the Gabber. I'm going to hear the message in the web inbox and you will see how it disappears from both. And now for the final test, I'm going to leave another voicemail and I'm going to use my IP communicator to be registered as Otis IP communicator so that you can hear the message. Now for this final test, as you can see, I have locally registered the IP communicator with Otis directory number and I also have Jabber running in the virtual machine and I'm going to dial to voicemail. Enter your PIN followed by pound. Bill Mosley. Hello. You have one new voice message. Plus you have five saved messages. New messages. Message one from Cody Taylor. Hello Bill, this is message number three using the zip trunk integration. This is message number three of the zip trunk integration. Received today at 4 12 p.m. To repeat, press one to save it, two to delete it. Saved. End of new messages. And as you can see, the MWI was turned off in the IP communicator and in Jabber. With this, we conclude the demo and we also finish the video. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope this was useful for you.